your mind. Shit, shut up, speak your mind. Hey, yo. On your grind. Wait, when you speak your mind. Man. Kyle Supal is almost at the end, ending point, and I hate to say that. I'm so sad. Yeah. But, you know, recently, um, if you guys been keeping up, you know, the college football playoff rankings have been coming out consistently. And the past rankings show that the top four teams are Georgia at one, Ohio State at two, Michigan at three, and TCU at four. Before you continue, Texas, you have one job. I don't want to hear nothing. I from knew me. Texas was going to lose that game. I don't want to hear nothing. And I'm going to touch bases on that real, real soon. I don't want to hear nothing about no Longhorns, no Hook'em Horns. I don't want to hear nothing about no Quentin Ewers. All y'all are trash. Period. Point blank. Go ahead. Sorry. Now, <laughs> so pretty much, um, like I said, Georgia is at one, Ohio State's at two, Mission's at three, TCU's at four. Mm. How I can see this playing out is that if Georgia wins the SEC, which I still have them winning, but I'm not sleeping on LSU completely. Yeah. But if Georgia wins out, they're the clear number one team. Now, I'm going to skip – us real quick because I'm going to touch bases on us like on the last part of the segment. Okay. Now with my thing is this: the door is wide open for the Big Twelve and the Pac-12 because Washington just recently beat uh, Oregon in a classic game, mm, and that was a great game. Exactly. Michael Penix he made a right decision switching to uh, transferring to Washington after uh, Indiana, and um, yeah, so that happened, and then at the same time too, uh. Like 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 you just said, TCU uh, beat Texas, which I knew they would because right. I trust I trust uh, their their offense way better than but they Texas str- offense. they definitely struggled though. It wasn't I, just a struggle; it was more like a defensive game for the first three quarters because they were definitely trying to fill each other out. Yeah, yeah, and and everyone said that TCU lacks on defense, but they yeah. they, they kind of show what their defense can really do once mm-hmm. they put it all together. Right, you know. So I was kind of happy to see that. So my thing with uh, TCU is like they're more likely will have to play an- this another team that they beat in the Big Twelve Championship. So mm-hmm. if they win that con- convincingly, then I feel like they they're in there. They they'll move up to the third spot. Now with the Pac twelve, I just feel like it's gonna come down between U- USC and UCLA because that's night this weekend. And I believe USC has one loss, right? Because they lost to Utah. Yep. And then crazy enough, UCLA they have one job too. Was they lost to Arizona. Yeah, they lost to Arizona. You guys were supposed to come into the game with both one loss, and then it would be better if y'all both came in undefeated. But uh, yeah, but y'all y'all both were supposed to come in there with one loss and then knock each other off. Right. But that didn't happen. Now the games that UCLA, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Uh, I I granted it's like a for all like home game for both, but. It's technically you. I think a home game for UCLA. I mean, you got you in Pasadena, and then you in what? Uh, where's USC really located at? Like that's in like LA. So like still, but still, like um, I got USC winning that game. Mm. Um, now granted, I feel like uh UCLA is not going out without a fight because DTR has been balling this season and Charbonnet and that offense at the same time too. But um, you know, Slinky Riley, Kayla Williams, I just feel like they have better explosive players. Offensively, especially at the wide receiver position, so oh, that's no, that. I, I like it's a still it's still it's, a, hard. it's still an equal equally matchup, yeah. but I just feel like USC is going to get that win. Now, yeah. again, I will not be shocked if UCLA pulls out a win, but if they do, then the Pac-12 was really shooken up. Yeah, they they're done. Yeah, so um, so that's the, so yeah, whoever comes out of that, and more likely we'll have to play a team like Utah or Oregon in the in the uh, Pac-12 championship, mm-hmm. and then whoever wins that might. Get in the playoff because at the same time too the uh, ACC championship is already set and it's uh North Carolina and Clemson. Clemson yeah. And, and I honestly, I North got Carolina, North Carolina yeah, to win that game. <laughs> I got North Carolina too. Because I I just knew they were gonna Clemson was gonna lose a game. It just was so ironic that the game that they lost was the same game DJ Uwe Ungagale was the starter at two years ago during the COVID year. When Trevor Lawrence caught COVID and they had to play against Notre Dame on the road mm-hmm. and he lost that game in overtime. And they came back to Notre Dame, and they lost in a more, less convincing fashion. They just got killed. <laughs> yeah, they got blown the fuck out. You know, and <sighs> at the time of this recording, we are literally one week away for from what I think will be the game biggest of the game of the year between Ohio State and Michigan. Now, I'm going to give it to you in a second, but I just got to say this real quick, too. What I've been seeing from Ohio State lately, you know, 
people have been talking about our run game the past three weeks. And, yes, it has been, like, you know, up and down because, one, injuries have been playing a factor in our run game because yeah. coming into the season, you know, we kind of expected that Travion and mine will be fully healthy. But both of them have been banged up with injuries. It's like if one gets hurt, then the other one, the other one has to play. And then the other one comes back, the other one gets hurt again. So, mm-hmm. like, it's been a back, consistent, a back and forth, back and forth right. versus something just staying consistent. You know, and then uh, this past game we played against Indiana, you know, granted, it's Indiana, but I can honestly say this was the best I've seen the run game look because I feel like the play calling was a lot better. The gaps and holes were opened up a lot better, and I feel like our strong suit is for us to run up the middle Mm -hmm. to set up runs on the outside, you know, and um, it's just unfortunate that Mayan got hurt in that game because he was eating because I feel like he if he kept playing, he would have got, like, close to 200 yards rushing. Mm, I was about to say, I feel like with Mayan, y'all, y'all, I don't, I don't like when y'all try and make him go outside. Because he's more he, of a north south. Yeah. He, no, he is a north south. He is a north south. Yeah. So it's like that's that was the whole thing of my my thinking of when you guys had Travion and mine. It was supposed to be the one two punch of mine gets those hard yards in the in the up the middle, and then you get Travion going to the outside to the outside. But I mean, I, I get you want to show that they can do both. both. But, but it's kind of obvious given their play style yeah, who's like who's what yeah yeah but um but also too I will say like even though Dewan Jones didn't play that game Josh Fryer pretty much solidified him as a right tackle for next year so I just want to throw that out there too mm. but um so yeah like I just feel like the injuries have been playing a factor and the play calling wasn't the best but I just feel like they emphasize on running the ball and I think it showed and I think they finally have something that they're going to stick with. Now, moving forward, we have Maryland this upcoming game. And if I'm Ryan Day, I'm still sending out Travion, and I'm definitely sending out Mayan Williams. So, Dallin Hayden, um, Xavier Johnson, and we, and um, they're saying we're going to get a trip, uh, train them back. So, those three guys, hey, the floor is yours. So, do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And um, defensively, I mean, I'm falling, mo- I'm falling more in love with this defense because. Literally, it's like the way we've been flying to the ball has been outstanding. The linebackers, I feel like, to me, are my favorite, you know, group group, group this season because Steel Chambers and uh, Tommy Eichenberg have been showing just straight, you know, pure linebacking skills. And Tommy Eichenberg, I believe, is just literally just slowly steady and climbing his way up on the um, Mel Kuyper's board as far as, like, top linebackers being taken because I honestly can see him being, like, an early second-round pick or even a – late first round pick depending on how far we go this season right. and still chambers you know from a guy and i knew him switching back to linebacker was going to help help his game out because he played running back too in high school and in in an ohio State until he finally made that switch Fully. last year but he finally got you know coached up the right way by jim knows because like i said he's a, also the linebacker coach too mm. so i was definitely happy about that and i'm finally finally seeing this d line come together as far as like the pass rush because uh, Zach Harrison, granted, he hasn't been putting up like Chase Young tight numbers, but he's been playing a lot better and a lot differently. Um, Teron Vincent's finally showing why he was a five star. And uh, JT Tui Mololau and Jack Sawyer are going to be a problem 2023. Because I, I feel like uh, Jack Sawyer finally came out um, and showed what he can really do against Indiana, you know? Now. And real quick, real quick. And our secondary, I feel like we're finally, we're finally getting healthy. Because, granted, it's Indiana, but the way Cameron Brown was playing in that game, breaking up two passes, I was definitely happy to see that. Now, granted, you know, still some busted coverages happened in that game, but I just still like the fact that they were able to regroup, and Lathan Ransom is balling. Because mm. I noticed, like, they finally kind of had to say, like, hey, we're not going to switch them, go back and forth between you and Josh, so we're going to make Lathan the full-time uh, free safety, and – you know, that was a smart move because I love Josh Proctor, but Layton just has better vision to me. And I feel like Josh Proctor is more of the in-the-box safety uh, type player. I'm going to blow you up. Yeah. Layton, run, run defender. Run yeah, Layton, yeah, Layton, he can cover the field, but at the same time, too, he has enough speed to still play inside the box and get you on, on a delay blitz. I got you. So, so yeah, that, so yeah uh, that's uh, that for Ohio State now. Yo, Wolverines. I was about to say the one thing because I was wondering if you're going to uh, touch on your secondary. Granted, your front seven, I agree, that is like top tier. 
is out. You guys are there. We're top five in categories. So right, right. Secondary, y'all still a little. It's a little shaky. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real. Y'all a little. Shaky, I mean, they're so. gonna get tested against Maryland, yeah. so I, I want to see how this is gonna look with a full, healthy secondary. Right. Facts. Um, but for my Wolverines, uh, hey man, uh, defense. I'm gonna start with defense. To uh, like Ty was saying, I I feel like our front seven is up there as well. Um, our D line, Mike Morris. I'm very I'm very satisfied with what he has done, uh, taking over for Jabo and Aiden Hutchinson. Granted, I'll say it like this: since we don't have the quote unquote stars like they were, again, cohesively playing as a unit. That is, we are the most dominant defense I've seen. I feel like in that's both time. of our defenses, deep, deep lines, because we don't have our standout player, but as a cohesiveness, there every, a lot of people have been stepping up for both sides of the ball. So I, I, I did want to say that. Mm, I agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, was it? I'm just, I'm very pissed that at, towards the end of the uh, Nebraska game, he got up limping. So we we are in the same boat as y'all. Injuries is kicking our asses. Like <laughs> I. Half the time I, I look at the depth chart, I'm like, bro, where is everybody at? <laughs> like, I didn't even know uh, Luke Schoonmaker was out for that game until they said something. I'm Wait, like, he was out against Nebraska? Yeah, I'm like, nigga, what the f- what happened to you? <laughs> you were just playing against Rutgers. I, granted, I, I I have a I have a feeling like they're kind of like saving saving people. Like, okay, you can you can calm down for this week. But I'm just I'm like, dang, bro, like literally the depth chart just just get bigger and bigger every week. I'm like, bro, are we are y'all not trying to play or what? <laughs> but yeah, injuries is definitely um a thing for, for us too. Uh our O line, granted, is very is still very dominant, but we still have interchanging pieces, it feels like, every week. And I'm just like, bro. Can I just find somebody to stay healthy for like two weeks consistently? Um, D- uh, Donovan Edwards, he he left the game early last week with a, a soft soft cast on his hand. I don't know how how serious that is. No one's really talking about that right now. So we're we're trying to figure out what's up with him and Mike Morris. Um, yeah, man. Secondary, Will Johnson. My man is out here. He is definitely coming up and showing like why he is uh, a five star and why he got the number two from uh, Charles Woodson. He's he's definitely putting his name out there. He, I'm gonna put this out there and say he's gonna be an All American next year, because uh, that's that's already about to be a full 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 blown conclusion with that. Um, yeah, defense is just nice, man. Are you, so, are you going to bring up the obvious when it comes to your offense? Besides I mean, yeah. the run, Besides the run game. I mean, yeah, of course. I was, I was building my way up to that. I was building my way. Our passing game. <laughs> I'll say it like this. Okay, the deep ball itself. Just take that as as one thing. Is terrible. I'll just be <laughs> flat out honest. It, it, it's with not you. there. It's not. It's there. just not. I don't know if it's just because. JJ was out during fall and spring I, camp. I'll say this. I feel like watching his mechanics, I feel like he has a glitch in his throwing mechanics. I, I kind of do see what you're saying. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Because he be throwing, like, he'll throw the ball, but it goes that way. <laughs> like, his arm can be perfectly straight. But and then that it's bitch, just like a late glitch. It's just like, bro, what just happened? <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I'll, I'll be real. The the deep ball, just that that point right there is just bad. I will can't can't say that enough. That shit is terrible. I don't know if it's just off routes. People, I mean, I think it's. I a don't combination. think it's the routes. I think it's him. I don't know. I don't. I. I mean, he some 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 of the time. I'll say it like this: some of the time he is putting the ball in <laughs> the right position, and these niggas is just not catching the. Because what was, I think it was like in the first quarter. Um, he threw a deep shot to somebody. He threw the ball to goddamn. Uh, was it Anthony? No, I mean yes, but that one was just an overthrown. But he threw a crispy ball to um. Uh, Cornelius. Cornelius. I swear to God, bro. I am so ready for you to leave, bro. I promise you, I'm ready for you to leave. Because that shit literally was there. Went through, like, my nigga it, made a diamond and it went through, through his the diamond. Hand. Yes, I'm like, bro. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't deal with that no more. I really can't. Like, he's cool. Like, he's a good receiver when it comes to just doing, like, 
Sl- in, in, intermediate routes. Yeah, but like you're not he's not explosive, bro. Like he's just not. He's not him. He's not anything. I just <laughs> need him to get off the field. I'm ready for a freshman to take your spot. Period point blank. But <laughs> everybody else, I just feel like is they're not getting getting enough separation for him and then also JJ's not finding the rhythm of getting putting it putting it in the spots where they are wanting him to because there was a couple balls to uh uh I want to say Ronnie he he's a, he threw the ball to Ronnie on like a, a post or it was a deep deep slant and I think he was looking for it to go to his back shoulder but he threw it in, in front, front of him. I'm just like, ah, oh, I that's where I feel like the communication is off with both of them or just with the receiving room in general cuz he's still trying to figure out where everybody likes the ball placement at. Right. So, I don't know, I, but I do feel like it's coming. I I I believe it is it is getting there. I don't know when, but it's going to get there. Now, I mean, granted it has to get there before we get come down here. But but at the same time, I'm not gonna lie. Granted, Illinois, y'all have one job. Do not mess up. Like y'all, it's like God. The Big Ten West is trash. That's man. why I need U- U- USC and UCLA to come now because they're gonna save the Big Ten West. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, well, are they gonna put them in both of them in the West? I f- I feel like they're gonna switch up the the Big Ten conference as a whole because yeah, again, I, like again, like we already know USC, UCLA, and UCLA is coming over here. But if we get teams like Cal, Oregon, and Stanford. Now, you really got to do some readjusting. So, if I would have to see it, like, when it comes to the Big Ten East, because we already, you know, stacked heavy over there, mm. I would keep definitely keep Ohio State and Michigan. Keep Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State over there. Because right. those are the most consistent teams in the Big Ten East. But I don't know. Sometimes I feel like what it, what would it look like if – Ohio State, Michigan was in separate like divisions in yeah, the Big Ten. Yeah, and still keep the rivalry though. Like you, well, you then, still make that a, a at the end of the year game. But it's like again, I don't want. I feel like both teams shouldn't have, shouldn't have to play each other twice in the Big Ten conference game. Cause, You're right. Like that just takes away from the ambiance of the, of that game being the game of the last game of the regular season. So You're I right. feel like it takes away from that. So keep them in the same division. Mm. Now USC, UCLA. I mean, you can do that, but. I just feel like the impact wasn't be, won't be as impactful like Ohio State Michigan would be. Because mm. if anything, I would take USC in the East and put UCLA in the West. Because see, that, but I feel like that's that's just putting the the t te- the te- how do you want the balance beam just will be off off again. If well, I could, well, like I said, you can put Michigan State in the Big Ten West, and you and honestly, I will put. I'll put Rutgers in the Big Ten West. Granted, they are far on the East Coast in Jersey, but mm. I would just put them over there. And just because. <laughs> just because. It's, it's, it's Rutgers. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. So, but um, now now let's uh, dive into this question. Now, what do you think will be your team, like both teams, like, you know, Achilles heel for us to win that game? Me personally, it is y'all pass game because JJ can throw all those intermediate routes he wants to. Mm. But it, it it's going to come down to him throwing a deep ball to get to really make that yeah, offense open. explosive. Because I can honestly say y'all have some explosive receivers, man. Y'all just not are y'all are not utilizing them to their pedigree. And I feel like, and it's just some of the play calling too. It's just like, but I, real quick, I'm going. I'm I'm glad you bring that up. I'm going to say this: if Ohio State comes out like how we did in 2018, where we just straight pounce on y'all, y'all's coordinators are going to have their heads split yeah, because. No one is going to figure out how to adjust, and no one has veto power still. I'm sorry. Like, you can say what you want to say about a certain coordinator, but it's not going to be, you know, the final say-so off one of them. I'll say, well, to your point with the v, uh, with the veto power, well, okay, well, if you guys try and pounce on us, I feel like we have shown over the course of the year that we are a second-half team. Granted, y'all are too, so that is, that but, is going to be – But y'all are more one-dimensional than we are. Because we're finally getting our run game back to a, some some degree, but we can show that if we are a true balanced team, it's a it's a nightmare for anybody else. See, with that though, I feel it. There's there's different aspects in the passing game that we do very well in, and I was just listening to um, Devin Gardner and Sam Webb on their uh, on their radio show slash podcast on uh, YouTube. Um, when it comes to like play action. When it comes to read option, and was it? I've always said like 
from the 20 on our end to marching down to the 20 on the opposite end. That the middle of the field, like there is wide open for y'all, bro. There is no team in the in the nation that is fucking with our offense. Period. Like there, there is no one stopping that shit at all. Like I, I put, I will put money on that shit. Like our, what I want to say, our just our philosophy on that. Like we are able to hit key play, hit key routes and key plays and run the ball effectively. When it gets down to the nitty gritty to the red zone that is the issue and it's just because hard to figure that part out for because us. my thing is like i don't and people haven't noticed this but y'all have been getting exposed a lot recently because i was really shocked when y'all got shut out three times on against records in the end zone but that's and the, it took y'all four and took y'all fourth down to finally score two touchdowns but that's what i'm saying because the play calling is just because like, everyone man, knows y'all gonna run the ball yeah but it, there's ways to do that though like there is different ways of just having Blake go up the middle all the fucking time. Like there there's other ways to get him the ball if you want to run the ball. There's other ways to have yeah. different play calls in the red zone. Like it does not always have to be I'ma just have JJ hand the ball off to Blake and, you know, make him do what he do. Like, no, there's different ways to do this. But I feel like we be so stuck in our ways because we wanna show our dominance and show that we can Line up man to man, hat on a hat, and just blow niggas off the off the line. That is not always going to work, especially when we play like Georgia or someone like they got three hundred pounders consistently on the line. Like that is not always going to work. So that's where I get irritated watching us all the time. And I don't know, just in the red zone, I just feel like we have a multitude of things that we can do. It's just I don't know if they're holding that shit for y'all. Or they just are just so hard headed to the point where we're just gonna be like, hey, we're just gonna run the ball. I feel like y'all hard. I feel like y'all, it's the hard head in this because again, it's like they Michigan has shown for two years in a row that they are a run first team, and that if it's going good or if it's going bad, we're going to run the ball, and that's what I've been seeing the past few weeks. If it's going bad, y'all are going to run the ball regardless because y'all feel like y'all have the O line and the running back to get in the end zone, and it showed against Rutgers because. Literally, Corn after I think the first touchdown was on a, on, on a sideline dry heaving. <laughs> mm. Now the nigga's been throwing. He threw up like I've counted like three times. This nigga throwing <laughs> up, but he I feel like they've said like he's he's only done done that because you know he's just got so many so much nerves and you know you just gotta get him out, get him out. But literally, <laughs> I don't know. But, I I'll just say it like this. Oh well, go ahead. Talk but like my thing. But like again, I just feel like you know when it comes to y'all again, like. Like, let me ask you this. Do you really feel like that y'all's competition has been up to par or y'all feel like y'all really haven't played an explosive team overall, offensively and, de- and defensively, that can really match y'all's toughness? Um, To the toughness part, no. I don't feel like we've faced a team to match our toughness. Except may – Maybe for Iowa, just on the toughness side, and maybe for Maryland. I feel like they're just more – they're tough, but they're more so fundamentally sound. sound. Yes, I agree with that. But I, I still – you know, those are corn-fed white boys over there in Iowa. So, like, they, got, they tough. Got some too in the, I mean, yeah, there. but, you know, we, we sprinkle in some Fl- Floridians and, you know, some, some speed over here. But <laughs> over there, that's just, you know, I'm going to pick up – uh, Billy Bob Thornton from Hamilton, Ohio. You know <laughs> we gonna make her do what it do, but Iowa that that is a that is a tough team over there, and Maryland. I feel like we we got a chance to see what uh, some some sort some, of explosiveness looks like. Yeah, has it has it been on like a consistent basis? No, no. until we play y'all. So because I feel like just in the scenario, say if y'all beat us again, I just feel like. Y'all will definitely be exposed as far as like, okay, y'all are about to face like real, real explosiveness off, off, offensively and toughness on the defensive side of the ball. Mm, I, I agree. I, I don't want to say we're going to get exposed full heartedly, but we're definitely going to be like scratching our head and be like, damn, these. Like, are we sure we are meant to be here? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because, granted, now, I, granted, now, now, granted, last year y'all had every right to be in the playoff. I give y'all that, but I'm, I just knew Georgia was about to beat the shit out of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say it like this though: 
that picture is the most iconic thing I have ever seen in my life. Oh, and when uh, Quorum. When uh, all of them. When all of them were just sitting and watching them niggas celebrate. celebrate. Now, I'm telling you, that pic- that that really did something to them. I promise you it did. And and I got something to, to get back to, but continue. And if we are able to beat y'all and make it to the playoff again, that picture is just going to be in history forever like that that's just going to be like a uh, a point in michigan history where we knew like things are going to change and now for my combatant is on that this is my thing ryan day is a coach that does not forget and i'm going to keep saying this and you can agree with me on this mm-hmm. hold on before you say that i want to say this one thing do you feel like ryan day is turning y'all into Big 12 football. No. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to say that after I say my combatant in this part. Okay. Now, again, Ryan Day is a coach that, just, that, that does not forget. Because going back to 2019, a game where everyone knew we should have won that game against Clemson, but thanks to a stupid targeting call and a stupid turnover that should have won us the game. Mm. It is what it is. 2020, we played Clemson again, a game that everybody wanted wanted to see that rematch in. But prior to that season, Ohio State had that score in every part of the facility possible just to have a remembrance of, look, this is what happened, and if we play them again, we're not losing. Mm. Lo and behold, we played them again. We literally ended the the reign of Clemson football. It's just that simple, point blank period. Mm. Last year, we had a very young team, but we were still putting up numbers to a degree. But at the same time, too, as a whole, that team was not – inclusive with everything and even the coaching staff because it showed because you had a player literally quit in the middle of a game (laughs) you had people transferring out and you had to switch coordinators in the middle of the season Mm -hmm. given like some form of complicity on the defensive side of the ball right now to a degree it did work didn't work good enough because we got killed by oregon and y'all and y'all beat us every 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 so every so every right so that y'all have Mm -hmm. you know so that's that now, what does Ryan Day do in the offseason? He cleans house. Once again, he goes to Jim Knowles, a coordinator that had Oklahoma State in the top five defensive category, had every right to. We got him. We got Tim um, Tim Walton from the, Jag- from the Jag- Jaguars, who was a former Buckeye, who I still did not know play for Ohio State back in the 90s. <laughs> and then um, we went down to Cincy, and we got Perry uh, Eliano because he coached up uh, Sauce Gardner, who is – Killing it in the NFL, by yeah, the way. he's going crazy. You know, so I, we were glad to get him. And also, too, we were able to snatch uh, Josh Fryer from uh, UCLA for the O-line coach. And I feel like he's brought a different spark to the to the uh, whole offensive line. Mm-hmm. So that was that. Now, again, <clears throat> everybody that was on that team that was relatively young was already coming back. You know, and I knew for a fact that seeing that image of the Amazing Blue celebrate Granted, on their field, but just having that feeling of finally losing to them after a nice 10-year decade of dominance of us beating y'all, mm. you know, it resonated with them. And I knew they took it personally. I knew they did. Knew, I knew they did, the entire team. So I knew coming into this season, they were not trying to have that experience two years in a row. They just weren't. Because even Luke Whippler said that any time that game comes on, he gets pissed, which he has every right so, mm-hmm. every right to so. And C.J. Stroud even has come out and said that I'm not trying to lose that game again. I'm not trying to lose that game. Now, this is where I feel like we just have a slighter edge over y'all. Because, again, it's been four years since the last time we played y'all in the shoe, since 2018. And I'm going to keep saying it. That bullshit of a call, but, you know. 2018? Or you you talking about twenty sixteen? I'm talking to yeah twenty sixteen. But still, I'm I'm still not I'm we still holding on to that bullshit. <laughs> that shit never died as long as we we been out not playing y'all. So we we still hold on to that. It is what it is with that. But still, twenty eighteen was the last time we played y'all in the shoe. And again, who was coaching that game? Urban Meyer in his last game coaching Ohio State, mm. and Dwayne Haskins in his last game at co- playing at Ohio State, who ultimately passed this past this, earlier this year, I believe, right? Yeah. So rest in peace, Dwayne. Exactly. So CJ Stroud has already said that he's dedicating this season to Dwayne Haskins. That, so that's already out there because he has his name on his uh, arm wrap on his sleeve and all that stuff. 
they're probably they're going to run with that in the media as far as like you know what's it what's it finally mean to finally play this finally play that team up north back in the shoe after a four year gap period. Mm. So I know they're probably going to run with that, but also too, the you know I feel like this moment will now be like the you know greatest moment in Ohio State football history with with a Cameron Babb but what he did this past Saturday. That was great. Like, even, like, even though I'm a not an Ohio State fan, I can appreciate, you know, someone's journey and understanding how, what they've had to go through. So, that was like, amazing. I feel like if you ask any player that had an ACL tear, if you ask them, if you can withstand three more ACL tears, do you feel like you can still play? I guarantee you most of them will say no. Yeah, right. He went through four. Mm-hmm. One in high school, another one in college. By the way, he had four of them, two of them on both knees. That's crazy. Crazy. And then he had other, you know, setbacks too, like with some like meniscus tear and like some partially torn ligaments. Like mm. he has all that, but yet he still stayed. And that shows you how much faith he has in God. Mm. And did you, uh, I was watching their interview. Did you catch their interview a little bit? I really didn't have to catch it just to know like how impactful that was because yeah. for him to have that moment and for the entire team. To celebrate, yeah. just to celebrate with him was enough. Like I didn't really have to listen to him to that interview because I knew it was already impactful enough. Mm. So I just feel like with that, with him finally having that moment, and I feel like they might, they probably will start to utilize him to a degree, not a whole lot, but to a degree. And I just feel like his embodiment of what it means to keep playing, keep playing through all the adversity he's been through, I feel like will be you know our motivation to beat y'all even more. And I feel like. If we can emulate what we did in 2018 where we just came out straight guns blazing and we just take the momentum away from y'all early, mm. that's why I feel like we're probably going to win this game. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be a blowout because I still feel like y'all will put up points because, again, y'all going to rely on Corum to win y'all the game. Let's just keep it a buck. But I just feel like, and I feel like, and I can agree with you on this too, both teams are saving stuff for each other. But I just feel like, again, what's really – making his team stand out is our defense because that's one area that we've been lacking consistently since 2019. Mm. We, if we had a consistent defense with a consistent defensive coordinator who knows how to call up schemes and disguise them, it's a problem because they're going to show how athletic we are and why, you know, these players came here. And I feel like Jim knows is really about to dig into his bag and really show, okay, we really about to confuse y'all because he likes to dis- <coughs> he likes he likes to get to confuse the offense which i feel like every defensive coordinator does but the way he does it it's unreal mm. and i still feel like with ryan day he is about to unleash some offensive uh fire what uh power calling plays that y'all haven't even seen mm. my and I, I i do believe that i do believe you guys are holding holding stuff back and i do believe we're holding stuff back too um but i don't know i just feel in my heart of heart after watching what we did last year with what y'all had, quote unquote, with uh Alave, Wilson, uh Big Jigba, uh and Buka for little spurts last year. And we were still able granted, I'm not saying that we are gonna like stop y'all from having like a three hundred yard But that's the thing though too. You gotta think. We're doing all of this without Jackson. Now I- he's scheduled to come back for that game. I thought he was done. No, nah, no, nah, his dad said like the um the timeline for him to come back is against Michigan. Okay. So, but even but this is one thing I will say. If Ohio State had been 100% healthy the entire season, I think this conversation we're having is a very different conversation. It will be a little bit tougher to have. Okay. Exactly, because I feel like Michigan fans will be like, uh I don't know about this year because the way they playing, it's like Mm. I don't know because that's that's all I'm saying. It's like you know what we were saying that last year, and I was very vocal of like our secondary was just like. Uh, but I feel, but the main reason why y'all did win was because again we can we didn't have a good enough run game, mm-hmm. and we didn't adjust to when you know the pass game was taken away from us. So and plus again too y'all had a Jabu and Hutchinson who were playing their asses off that year. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's why y'all really won, you know. But at the same time, too, it showed last year y'all were a run first team, and y'all didn't really have to throw the ball as much. And then again, too, our secondary was horrendous last and I, year. <laughs> and I feel like that is that's still a main focus because again, we lead. I think 
we're at least like top five in both teams are top five in I think a lot of categories. Yeah, but but what really is catching my eye is the time of possession. So it, if we are able to eat eat clock and and still get points. So basically, y'all trying to do what Northwestern did when we played them, take away the time of position for us, for y'all to be on the field a lot longer. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was that was the whole thing last year, too, because the time of possession, we were up in the score on y'all on that one. Because honestly, too, what I did notice, like, when we ran the ball efic- e- uh, efic- efficiently Fishingly. against Indiana, we won the time of possession. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's all, that's all how it always is. If you can run the game or run the ball efficiently, you are going to eat clock like – like and I felt like we finally found what we need to do to run the ball to be to keep us on the field a lot longer offensively and for us to be more balanced. So, you know, to kind of wrap it up, um, like I said, we're a week away from that, but just giving our you but just give our quick uh, takes on like what to expect when we play Maryland for Ohio State and Illinois for uh, Michigan. Me personally, even though Illinois has been still somewhat of a disappointment because there's no way y'all should have lost to Purdue, but. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. The way that team has been playing on both sides of the ball, y'all, yeah. that will be y'all like first real test because that defense is scary. Their secondary can pick you off mm. at any point in the game. So if I'm JJ, I'm making sure my intermediate routes and my you know in and out routes are pinpoint accurate because if one glitch in my arm is going <laughs> on, I'm getting picked arm. off. I'm re- I I agree. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm looking at it from more of a standpoint of like, okay, w- with us with our health risk with everybody right now. What what is the lineup going to be like, and who's about to play, and how are they going to carry out carry out uh, their their jobs? So, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be it's going to be a close one. It might be a real na- it's going to be a nasty game. Isn't oh it? yeah, because like like I said, that defense is going to bring some physicality to y'all's O line. Yeah, so I and don't. I feel like I feel like I'll say this. I feel like Illinois is going to get like at least two sacks on JJ. I'll say that. I I wouldn't put that past them, but I don't. I'm not expecting it to be like a. I don't know. We we'll be lucky to see like thirty. 30 points for real, in my opinion. I'll say I'll say, I'll say like a smooth 27 20 game. Yeah. Y'all winning. You said 20 to 27 to 20? Yeah. Damn, you making it close. Hey, hey, they running back is nice. Chase Brown, he nice. I mean, yeah, but you know, they he he going against the number 1 ranked uh rush defense in the league, but you know, I mean, again, I, we'll I rather, see. We'll see. I, I, de- I digress. I digress. We will see. But um now for us against Maryland, I mean, they got shut out against Penn State, so yeah, that was disgusting. Yeah, and you know, as explosive ex, as explosive as they are with two uh, Talia and Raheem Jarrett and uh, Desmond Diemis at receiver, it's like seeing what Penn State did to them. I'm like, if we just emulate that, but just in our own way, mm-hmm. then we can put this game in the bag early. But I'm with you, health wise, like. If I'm Ryan Day, score as many points as we can in the first half, and, and sit everyone sit the <laughs> hell down. <laughs> yeah. Like, Straub, you done. Kyle McCord, get some reps. Devin Brown, you might see the fourth quarter. Um, You know, if we get trip, uh, Chip uh, training back, hey, Dallin, because I feel like Dallin Hayden is going to start this game. I just truly believe it. Mm. So, Dallin, you do what you do. Trip, uh, Chip, you're going to get some um reps too. And Xavier Johnson, you're going to be all over the place. <laughs> right. So, and, um, so, yeah. The faster, the faster we can, you know, get points on the board. The faster we can sit everyone out, sit, sit everyone out. That's that's going to be okay. definitely needed against uh, Michigan come um, the following week. And like I said, I feel like Travion and Mayan will be not playing this game just to give them some rest. And I feel like with Travion, him finally having the two two full weeks of you know not playing is going to help his foot out. And I feel like whatever injury Mayan has that you know looked scary, but he even tweeted saying that he's all good. So Still, sit him out, and I know his I'm, but I am praying, I am praying to God that if Jackson Smith and Jigba is at least ninety-seven percent healthy going into the mis- this Michigan game, I feel like that will just be the wrinkle in our offense that will finally come complete. Because not only will y'all have to stop him, y'all definitely will have to stop Marvin Harrison. Now, my only thing besides those two is that. I just need Emeka and Julian to just get off their blocks a lot better as far as like when they're getting pressed. Fleming, I'm Fleming. Uh, 
He's had an up and down year, but he's finally healthy. That's all I care about. Yeah, still, <laughs> still. But um, but only, yeah. I'll say it like this though. I want to say this. Um, with our secondary, I it's like I like I like the matchup though. I mean, granted, if you guys get in Jigba that or did I say yeah, in Jigba yeah, um back. Yeah, if you get him back, that's that's definitely going to make me scratch my head. That's going to cause some problems because now I'm it's like, like y'all got to count for him and Marvin. I'm like, I don't know who, who can who do you he, trust to put on one of them? Yeah, I mean, Will Johnson is my person. I'm putting on uh, Marvin Harris. I'm sorry, but Will Marvin's going to cook him. I'm sorry. I don't know. He's, yo. He's, I'm sorry. The what? I don't know. Man. Literally, they're saying he's like his dad, but just taller. That's, that's saying something. That's fine. Like but, he's like his daddy, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. What I'm don't saying, get me wrong. I like Will Johnson. I wanted that nigga to come to Ohio State, but he went to Michigan. So I, I understand why. But you putting a freshman on a nigga like that. Hey, man. I'm, but he is – like, he he's not a normal freshman, though. He's 6'2". Like, that, that's, that's, and he's got, what, two inches more? I, I can live with two inches a little bit. I can but it's not just the height. It's the route running. And Marvin's route running is becoming more crispier each game. But Will Johnson is put on these clamps. Ty, I'm telling you, like, bro, look at this nigga's film, bro. I am telling you, I, I, tell, I am telling you, this nigga is getting better and better. Each but I'm saying week. in a game like this, when he has never played in this game before. Right, I give you. Granted, Marvin, Marvin has it, but he's experienced what that game intakes. I give you that. I will. I want to say, I'm not saying we're going to put him on a complete island, but I'm saying. That's what Ryan Day wants to do, put him on an island. <laughs> we gonna we gonna have Macari Page or one of our safeties. He's six four, right? Macari Page? Yeah. I believe so. So we we gonna That's ha- a tight end matchup with K Silver, by the way. So that's an equally matchup. But I still love K Silver because when he gets going in the pass game, he is a he is literally the farm Gron- uh <laughs> Rob Gronkowski. Gronkowski. Yeah. yeah. Um but I don't know, like I like I like our matchups that we have right now if Njigba is not playing. Like, I, I trust DJ Turner. If, if This is me. I, this is how I'm going to put my line, lineup. I will put Will Johnson with safety help on Marvin Harrison. So, y'all double teaming Marvin. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the fuck? Like, but guess what? If y'all do that, guess what? You have another explosive person to get open. See, I can live... I'm taking away CJ and Marvin is like this. I understand that. Them niggas is like this. If I can take away this and make it like that, I'm cool. But guess what? Guess what? If he can connect with Ibuka and Julian, guess what? You got to account for them too, too. That's fine. That's, and and K Sober. That's fine. I got niggas for them, though. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I, I have tr- Because you're going to have Marvin one-on-one at some point in the game if y'all try to double team him. I believe that. And I he's going to win the route most of the time. We don't know. I'm I'm leaving that to uh to uh what's the word I wanted to use? I'll just leave that up to uh fate at that <laughs> point. But I f- I'm putting Will Johnson on Marvin. I'm putting DJ Turner on Mbuka. I'm putting G- DJ Turner can play in the slot. Yeah. Okay. I'm putting uh Gmon Green on Fleming. Um. Then Sto- you putting put the page on Stover. If they, if they both six four. That's an equally matchup then. Yeah, I, I could do that. But also, we're gonna. Ha- um, he's gonna do. He's gonna live in like the middle of the field. So you know, he's gonna have um, uh, Junior Colson following him a lot of the time too. Granted, Junior Colson is a low, a low iffy on his um, coverage. Game. Yeah, pass coverage. But that's where also we have uh, Michael Bennett uh, doing his thing too. With damn, y'all got a Michael Bennett too on y'all team. Yeah. Because we had one on our D-line back in 2014. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I mean, these niggas' names are very uh, similar similar nowadays. So, it's like, it is what it is. But uh, that's, how, that's how I'm looking at it right now. I'm seeing if if Egypt uh, doesn't come come back, that's my matchup, in my in my opinion. And I, I'm very confident in that. And especially if we can still implement what we did last year the same way. I, it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard not to go with that. I don't want to say y'all should do that because again, this is a different team and it's, these are different groups of receivers. Right. I I get it, but I'm I'm just saying. And again, I'm not saying that you guys are not going to get your yards. Y'all are definitely about to rack up probably three, three forty on us. But it's again how y'all get the three forty because we last year we y'all had like what three. 
uh, I want to like say 360 or something like that. Y'all, y'all definitely threw the ball and got your yardage, but it was how y'all. It was it. running the ball that that really held us back. I mean that too, but it was in the defense too, in our defense. That too, but it was just more or less how y'all were uh, getting these uh, getting those yards from those catches because all those balls were contested every time, every trip. Yes, you guys had. If you really look back at that game. Y'all were making some spectacular catches. That one catch in Jake had like on his back shoulder where he caught it on one of y'all's defenders. Like, like y'all, how, did, how y'all, did you catch that? Y'all niggas were needing some crazy shit to like. Catch. And then and then the first touchdown. Like I knew Garrett. He he been doing stuff like that since high school. So that wasn't a shock to when he mossed y'all's uh, DB and got that one foot in for a touchdown. Yeah. So that wasn't a shock. But I'm just saying it. <laughs> it was taking those kind of plays for y'all to get these yardage and get these touchdowns and stay in the game. That's all I'm saying. If we can still implement that, I mean, I like, again, I like our chances a lot. That's all. I'm going to leave it at that. Go blue. <laughs> so, so just to wrap this up, man, um, like I said, Ohio State, Michigan is on a collision course for November 26th. Yes, and sir. literally whoever wins that game will represent the Big Ten and in the play.